Hey, Brian here. Oh, uh, Silk River. And then we got the big little shop uh, broadhead. Uh, it's a period broadhead that would date anywhere from, I'd uh, say, the 9th century or 8th century all the way up. Made out of steel like this, socketed. All, all the way, way up uh, to, the, to this date and era, actually, but I mean, it's designed probably to rent the Renaissance era. Uh, we've got a socket on it, which makes it really good. I'm going to show you how to put that on here in a minute. And basically, you can slip it on. It'll fit tight if you carve it properly. Um, this arrow was used against animals for hunting. It's a great hunting arrow. That's what broadheads are designed for. We know that. They're designed for blood loss. We'll be testing that out today. Uh, the width of this thing is almost a full inch. It's about uh, three-quarter inch. Yep, and that's right. Uh, in centimeters, it'd be about 2.2 centimeters. And its length is about, uh, total length is about 5.2 uh, centimeters, and it fits on about a 7 millimeter shaft. Right, it's a very, very nice construction. They're hand forged. Uh, they're fairly cheap. You could have a whole quiver of these at an event. Picture That's that. true. And, and these are still nice. functional. These are not just replicas. And although they are good representations of what we find in history, these are actually very good replicas of what you would have found in archaeological finds. Yeah, you can find these uh, depicted in drawings and pictures online that were actually found all the way to the Viking era. And in the Viking era, these would have been used way more often because there was a lot of cloth armor and leather armor, which that's one of its big drawbacks. No matter how hard you make it or so on, you can still cut wood or puncture holes in it if you have enough force behind a small Right, exactly, which point. is why these were used a lot against levees. Yes, uh, in the Viking era, only about maybe 10 to 20 percent of the people in the army you're facing would even have something like scale or, or actual chain. Or right. scale early period, chain came in later, but or lamellar even possibly, that no sure. one would have it. So these arrowheads would work on the troops, but it would work very well on uh, mount, mounted uh, troops. I mean, like later cavalry, century, yeah, later century, if you're in full plate, your horse didn't always have barding. Some of them did, some of them didn't, but if you had horses coming in, a, a light cavalry or something, these would definitely take them out. It'd be nice to have some of these in the quiver with your, your bodkins. bodkins. Right. And they even had bodkin, bodkin type arrows, they're not actual later century bodkins, in the Viking era for armor. But I guarantee you that everybody would have carried a quiver full, uh, at least a half a quiver of some of these in case they needed them. Because these, these bleed out quicker and cause a lot worse wounds right. and, and a higher death count than just bodkins. Sure, these are, this creates a highly significant wound, which suddenly we've covered in, in previous uh, videos in our own, uh, in our own uh, web series. Um, so it, the more blood loss you create, the faster your target dies, whether it's your quarry or whether it's an enemy on the battlefield. Exactly. The and more you open and these up. can be put on loose if you like, if you carve them right, where they fit on loose and don't uh, fit on tight, or you don't fit them on tight, you can put them in any angle you want. Let's say for hunting, you want them straight up and down if you have straight fletching. And you'll make sure that it goes in between the ribs of the animal easier. Uh, if it's for humans, uh, I guess, you, know, you can have it horizontal. You can change that at, at whatever, you're, you're, whatever you want. Your whim. I think it's interesting that you do it that way as well because human beings have the ability to pull yeah, arrows out. Yeah, they get an arrow so. stuck in there. Uh, and they pull the shaft out and still have to go for it. Yeah. Uh, which would make it a lot nastier. Uh, and it still works for hunting too, so you don't pin it down. An animal can't pull it out. And so. depending on what you carve it, you can put it on here so tight that it's not going to come off as because it's pressed on so Exactly. Yeah. And so a lot of people just slip on the shaft. I mean, they talk about these different types of blues. They really don't need to pull this stuff from. I'll show you how to shave that down the way you want it. Right on. Well, let's, uh, let's do some testing on this to see what it's capable of doing. Oh, most definitely. We'll check the blood loss and we'll also see how well it can penetrate through multiple layers of uh, cloth. Right on. Let's just cloth on.
We're here now going to test uh, this medieval shop broadhead on uh, about 20 layers of uh, linen over the, uh, the bottle of fluid, uh, which in this case is grape juice. And we're going to see how much you can stop this broadhead. But it seems to be still effective even through 20 layers of light linen. Yeah, this, this is at point blank range. And yes, it, it was effective going through. We've got some nice cutting here. I think it's, I think it's really nice, you know. Uh, this deep. is great. Uh, not all the way through, though. No, but not all the way through. Not through and through like any of the others. Well, all right, we're back again. Now, we've added a four more layers. So we've got uh, 24, 24 layers. Of linen around this uh, this grape juice bottle. So now we're going to see at point blank range what this broadhead can do and just how much you can cut through. Now we're using a, a 45 pound draw weight bow here, which would be about period. Oh, dude, it just bounced right off, I think. It sure looks like it. Let's check that out. Now remember, our linen is not true heavy it's linen. Snagged right in the cloth. The cloth hung it right up. Never even. The, the way we explain this is we use lighter linen. They might have only had to use about 16 to 17 layers of heavier stuff. The, the cloth bound it up. Exactly. Did not let it proceed any further. Excellent. Uh, let's see what this medieval shop broadhead can do at point blank range through 24 layers. This is a 45 pound draw weight bow, so it'd be about period. Oh, 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 man. I don't think that had a chance in hell. I mean, that's a Viking hell. It bounced hell right off. You yeah, know? but how rich or weaker would, you, would a man have to be to have enough servants to uh, yeah, make that have much to cloth? Be an incredibly wealthy that's man. a lot of linen, and that's fine linen. They probably would use heavier linen. It, it tried to. So they wouldn't need as many layers, but. That's still you know, a lot of weaving. Yeah. Your I wives would be upset, or you'd have to have a lot of thralls to do such a thing. Most men would not have that many layers of cloth to stop it. True, you'd get a hell of a lot of trouble. And if they did, they'd probably have the mail on top of it too, so you wouldn't have to worry about it. Right, like I said, you'd get a hell of a lot of trouble if you were a bowman and you ran into something like that. Oh, most definitely, point blank. No doubt about it. This, Heads off this for the bowman on that one. Head. It went through up to 20 layers. 24 is where you reach your limit. You'd have one hell of a rich man to be able to wear all that. So I think they would still be used, definitely, most definitely. The Viking era almost on the battlefield all the time. No doubt about it, brother. Okay.
less than it would cost. It won't even go through as much of the arrow.